All right, ladies and gents, welcome to another Avatar The Last Airbender live action series episode review and recap and all that. This is episode two, Warriors, and this episode is basically the third or no, the fourth episode of the animated series, and I'm just going to talk about the worst parts of this episode And then, you know, just detail the good, because I'll I'll tell you, it it far outweighs, the the good far outweighs the bad here, okay? Listen. But, that being said, here are my issues with this episode. First one being that there is another boardroom scene. Then again, it is one, thank God, mercifully, it's only one. But still, I would prefer it not be a boardroom again. (laughs) when we had three in the first one, but whatever. And the fainting, frothing at the mouth fan of Aang in the first, ep- like like the animated show, you know? There's that frothing at the mouth person that just, you know, froths to the mouth whenever the avatar comes around and all that. My favorite meme that have ever come out of the show, and yes, that includes the cabbage guy, although that's a close number two. Okay, don't get me wrong. But the frothing the mouth fan, okay, that, that, mm, beautiful, beautiful meme hood. That person is not in this episode, and I think that's a crime, zero out of ten, terrible. But that being said, everything else in this episode is really, really good, let me tell you, okay? Also, I forgot to mention the previous episode recap and review that Momo wasn't around either and i was they they didn't get momo from the island or whatever the southern air temple but so it's a good thing i didn't say that because lo and behold momo does show up in this episode that he tags along although it it, it was kind of tagged on it wasn't necessarily like a big you know kind of a little bit of a bigger thing like it was in the animated show, but hey, I'll concede, you know, whatever, it's it's, it's doable. But yeah, it basically plays out almost precisely as the episode, except for, you know, Aang learning a lesson about being a, you, you know, kind of kind of stuck up jerk. That That's kind of taken out, which I'm kind of like, um, why did you take that out? But still, you know, we, we gotta move the pace along, I guess. It ain't about learning lessons, I guess. It's more about just the Avatar having to learn how to get, you know, be- become the Avatar, I guess. You know, that type of thing. Which, again, I'm sad that, you know, that had to end and all that. Y- you know, that that thing had to, like, go bye-bye, basically. But, you know, I- honestly, I'll-, I'll take a stupid version of Avatar stupid as in you know not that smart and not teaching a lesson or whatever then you know just just completely just garbage avatar like we got the last airbender movie which i again i said i wouldn't talk about the movie anymore but that that, that's all i'll say that's all i'll say about the movie but anyway and i guess i'll talk about this because I, i was expecting this to go down a whole different way but surprisingly enough it didn't so right before the series came out, probably like nine days before the series came out or something, there was news that came out that the Avatar, The Last Airbender, this this series is going to tone down Sokka in such a way where he's not sexist. Because apparently the creators or whatever of the live action show were saying that, I don't know, Sokka was kind of sexist and they wanted to refrain from him being like that. And that's his whole character, you know? He, Yeah, he thinks that women should be, you know, not, not doing, like, warrior type of stuff, but there, it's over and done in one particular episode on Kyoshi Island where he's like, oh, yeah, maybe women do have a role to play as being warriors and all that. And that's in that particular episode, you know? It, it's over and done with. It teaches kids and girls that war- that girls can be warriors, you know? It, it's a very inspiring episode. So why they came out and say said that, I have no idea. Because although he is toned down in this episode with being sexist and all that, it still works, okay? It, it still works. At least in my eyes. At least in my opinion. 
it still works. You know, instead of being all that about like women being kind of against women being warriors or whatever, Sokka actually admires the whole, you know, the Kyoshi warriors and all that type of thing to the point where he has to train and all that, which I got to say, you know, if they're going to go that route, that's also a fairly decent route as well because, you know, the, it establishes to keep the uh, uh, Suki, I think that's her name. I, 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 my apologies. I forget. I forget names constantly. But yeah, the, uh, what, what's, who's going to be Sokka's girlfriend at the end of the show? You know, that 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 girl. But anyway, yeah, they... They actually bring it closer together where she admires Sokka for, you know, going out and exploring the world. But Sokka is fascinated by this Kyoshi warrior in being, you know, just ha- like training and just, you know, just all this hoopla of being a warrior and all that. And I got to say that they complement each other. Dare I say it? They, they establish this slightly, I don't know, just, just, just a tad. I'm not going to say it because I think the show, the animated show works as well. This works well in a different way, I guess, you know. Neither are better, neither are worse. They're, they're just different, but they both work. I just wish we got the frothing of the mouth fan because she was just absolutely hilarious. Uh, again, we are two episodes into this eight-episode season, so who knows? You know, maybe she'll pop up in the Earth Kingdom. I have no idea. I don't know. The the Cabbage Guy is apparently going to be in this show, so who knows? Maybe the frothing in the mouth chick will show up. Hopefully, I I I, I highly hope so because that that they'll be just wasting valuable money on that. Also, what I. I didn't really necessarily say about the partic- the first episode was the music was surprisingly very well done even in the first episode right but this this episode right here oh mm, chef's kiss i don't know who scored this thing i i, I didn't even look at the credits because they already it was already on the next episode or whatever but oh my gosh they they, they went hard Especially during the action scenes, they went so hard. It, oh, oh, mm, chef's kiss. Okay, this is, it elevated it to the greatest extent possible, okay? And the action scenes, especially at that ending fight with on the island and all that, oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Even with the music, it's just, oh, it, it's one of the best fighting scenes I have seen in this series so far, and dare I say it, one of the best fighting scenes I have seen on TV in a very long time. And yes, I'm counting the Marvel stuff. Now, granted, I haven't seen a lot of modern day TV. You know, I've seen a lot, but I just haven't seen every single thing, you know? And plus, I'm not counting the anime and animation stuff, but the live action wise, hmm. Oh, it was beautiful. It, it was oh, awesome. There is a bigger emphasis on in this episode with Kyoshi because as we all know, in the anime series, Roku actually is more of a consoler and more of a uh, guiding force for Aang. You know, he's, he's kind of, because, you know, Roku came before Aang. So, you know, it would be make more sense that he have more of a connection toward the most previous avatar than, you know, any other avatar necessarily, you know? But we have a bigger emphasis on Kyoshi. And in fact, Aang kind of transforms into Kyoshi, you know, to, to fight and all that, you know, that hence why I said it was a big, big, huge fight. I'm, again, I'm on the fence about it because, hey, I love Kyoshi, okay? Don't get me wrong, okay? These novels that are coming out about Kyoshi, oh, hmm spectacular work okay i might do some book reviews on that who knows but i uh, i'm feeling a little bit of oversaturation kind of simmering with kiyoshi in particular sort of like how star wars kind of overdid a little bit with maul kind of putting him in a lot of stuff 
and kind of got a little bit tired of Maul later on toward the end there. I'm get I'm getting I'm getting s- some similar things here with Kyoshi. I I wish Aang could have met Roku before Kyoshi, you know, so you know he he can uh it would make a such a slightly bit more sense, you know, but you, whatever, you know, this is whatever. Also, we get a little bit more with Katara and all that, you know. I didn't really talk a lot about Katara in the first episode because it, it, it kind of plays out the almost the exact same. She kind of, I don't know, she was, she was with all the characters, she was talking and all that, but I didn't really, she didn't really do a whole heck of a lot, at least in my eyes. She's still, okay, acting-wise, wonderful. Writing-wise, is still I still have my problems with the writing. But, you know, all in all, she, I don't feel like she was really necessarily present all that much. The character, not the actress. The actress was giving her all. Don't get me wrong, okay? This time, though, I feel like she was more of a presence here. Like, she was actually, um, you, you know, really supporting Aang and all that. And, like, having fun with Aang and all that. And, you know, and all that type of stuff. And what's actually interesting is that this time, in this episode, we get the we have to go to the North Pole type of deal here. Because Aang gets kind of a a little vision from Kyoshi. Like, there, there's going to be a huge thing that's caused by him and he has to stop it. Which, <sighs> I don't necessarily know about that. It might work good and better in context. But I, I don't know, just, just right now, it seems like they just shoved it in because they were like, oh yeah, we forgot that Aang needs to go to the North Pole because he goes to the North Pole in the first season. So, how, we, and we forgot to include that because we squished the season, like we squished a couple of episodes in the first episode, in the first episode of this show. So what, what are you gonna do here? Okay, let's just show it right here. Okay, fine. You know, it seems like a really very late re- rewrites, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, I, I, I'm going to hold judgment on that particular part until later on. But it, for right now, it just seems a little, little lazy, it's for at least for me. You know, I know the writers are uh, they're not the best right now, but... Overall, they're doing fairly decently. You know, it, it, it could do a lot worse. Let me tell you. Okay, we've seen it. Also, I have to say, this is the, you know, the the episode where we get an introduction to Commander Zhao, which I gotta say, okay, I don't know who this actor is, but he is enjoying being his character. Okay, he has so much charisma. It is uncanny. Okay, I was honestly, there was a certain point where I was just kind of, okay, this is just kind of doing the same thing, but then he came on screen and I was like, oh, okay. This is actually getting kind of interesting because he actually said, we don't get a lot of VIPs here. And I was like, whoa, uh, um, okay. That's in with a regular actor. It seemed kind of a stupid line, but he made it seem like it was very natural and it was sort of funny how he delivered it. So yeah, I, I'm. I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm awake now. Let's let's do this. So yes, while this is more of a dumbed down version of Avatar: the Last Airbender, it's still decent. Okay, this is more like what <sighs> Game of Thrones compared to something like Lord of the Rings. I guess you want just. A lot of crazy action and all that with lessons like Lord of the Rings or you just want loud and crazy action with people being people basically but in a PG type of deal not like Game of Thrones but similar to Game of Thrones you know they're, they're, they're trying to appeal to a wider audience which okay fine you know but I, I think lessons would work here as well but you know whatever I'll take what we can get. It's fine. It's 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 fine. It's fine. I, I still think it's a, I still think it's a good sixty five percent or whatever this Rotten Tomato score is right now. It's like 61, 65, something like that. I still think it's right there. 
But I will can I will I will say that this episode I feel is a, is a smidge better. Just just to, just I I liked it. Uh, I just liked it. I enjoyed myself watching it more with this episode than I did in the first one. But then again, that's just me. You know, who knows? But anyway, though, guys, what did you think? Did you think this episode was better or worse than the first one? Do you like this show better or worse than the live, or the animated show? I was about to say live action, but do you like the live action show more than the animated show or vice versa? Comment, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell. Give us a like if you liked it. Give us a dislike if you disliked it. More vids coming your way and hey, take care guys.